All right, folks, and welcome to our Zoom stock analysis lecture. What we're gonna do in this lecture is walk you through our process of how do we evaluate the stock? How do we apply multiple valuation methodologies and also research stock analysis to come up with our own price target and determine should we buy the stock or should we sell it? And also, this is gonna be a great introduction lecture to how do we apply the skill set that our analysts in our program are learning and developing. Now, we're gonna do things a little bit different. In the previous lecture that we had done on Zoom, uh, a couple of months back, we went through the presentations, the process, we took screenshots, evaluating research reports, and also coming up with our own price target. In this lecture, we're gonna open up our spreadsheet and I'm gonna walk you through the actual calculations, the source of information, so that at the end of this webinar, you can walk away with the actual steps and apply it to any company that you're interested in investing in. And if you have a stock portfolio, then you can evaluate the business and apply the same steps and process. So with that being said, let's dive right into the material. So what you're seeing right here was obviously the cover page to our Zoom stock analysis that we did back in May. Obviously Zoom has more than doubled since the first time we did a stock analysis lecture on this company. So what we're getting to illustrate is just the slides, the PowerPoint that we created back in May, walking you through this process where we first did due diligence, understanding the situation of the business. Then we apply our technical skills. We forecasted revenue, earnings, we apply a valuation sales multiple to come up with our price target, and we also compared Zoom to other industry competitors, and we got to see what the market is paying for those business on a sales, EBITDA, and PE multiple. In this particular slide, you can also see the price increase or the return year to date on Zoom. And at the time we did this, the stock was up 154%. Now it's much uh, higher than that. And also the capital inflow into Zoom stock versus other industries that were being severely affected by COVID. The industries that got crushed, obviously, as listed right here, one was airlines. But you also had the restaurant industry, the uh, hotel industry, the cruise line industry. Uh, those were the industry that really got destroyed because of the pandemic. And again, you got to see capital outflow from that sector and capital inflow into Zoom. And, and, and of course, today we're going to evaluate where the stock is at and what is the new price target or recommendation that we will come up as if we were buying the stock into our portfolio that is shared with members in our analyst community within Romero Mentoring. This was the estimates slide from other analysts based on their most recent quarterly performance. You also got to see the highlights, their response to coronavirus, our research and comments from other research analysts at Boach Bracket Banks in the sales side. And also, what was their recommendation? And lastly, what were the estimates? And of course, we looked at comps, we did our own valuation. You could see here that on a sales multiple standpoint, the price target that we were getting, and this is back when Zoom was trading at 174, were in excess of $200 a share. So I recommend that you go back to that lecture, understand the process, the methodologies, what was my frame of mind, or what was I thinking about the company back in May, and also look at what we are going to do today and how my perspective, how my view has changed on the business once we open up our spreadsheet and begin to go through this exact same process, but being more practical, rolling up our sleeve and you're getting to see the actual mechanics that drive our assumptions and our model. So go back and watch this lecture, okay? Because when it was at 174, I was saying, hey, look, if it breaks resistance, this stock can go to 200. We also have a baseline price target of where the stock can increase, and this were the potential return on the stock or potential return on the investment if you had taken a position in the stock. So let's open up our spreadsheet and actually go through this process again. So the first thing to do here is have a step or a framework, a formula, if you will, on how to go about learning about a, a stock 
other than Zoom. This is meant to give you more understanding of the process so that you become independent and you can do it on your own. And hopefully if you come with a stock, if you come across a stock that has uh, good growth, is a strong business, then by applying this, it increases your confidence and it makes you a better investor. It elevates your knowledge. So the first step that we actually like to do within our program and even within my own fund is to understand the business, evaluate the company by visiting their website, looking at their products, their services, and understand is their demand. And you can know that just by simply looking at revenue growth. If revenue growth is 20, 30, 50%, then you know there is demand. But it's your job as an investor, as an analyst, to find the driving force behind that growth. Step number two, take a look at the company press release. More, more specifically, earnings. Did they beat earnings? What was the key highlights about the business during earnings? How did the balance sheet end it? How much cash did they have on hand? What about debt? Look at the cash flow. Where did the cash flow uh, went into in the form of capital expenditure? Their operating cash, is it positive or negative? What about free cash flow? And look at the financing activity section of the cash flow statement to determine how is the company funding their operations? Is it through debt or is it through equity? In addition to that, you may want to look at their financials. And by looking at the financials, you look at the income statement, the balance sheet, and the cash flow statement, just as I mentioned, but where do you get more specific information? You go to the SEC filing. You read the 10K and the 10Q. In addition to that, step number four, you perform valuation, okay? You could do sales multiple, PE multiple, and if you're a little bit more fancy and sophisticated, you could do a discounted cash flow analysis, or you could even do leverage buyout or merger uh, and acquisitions analysis. So these are all the type of valuation methodologies that you can apply. And if it's a business that has multiple divisions, you could even do breakup analysis or a sum of the parts uh, valuation analysis as well. And of course, you could look at the stock chart and apply technical analysis, supporting resistance and Gartley patterns. These are methodologies that we have shared with the public on our YouTube channel. And if you're hearing this for the first time, I recommend you that you go to our YouTube channel and look at stock analysis on any of the companies that we've covered so that you can familiarize yourself with these concepts and the formulas and the techniques. In addition to that, to understand the industry and what's really happening, what is the paradigm shift? Is there momentum uh, within this industry? Do a Google News run, look at the virtual communication industry. How big is it going to be? Is there any estimates on that? Look for a source of information relating to work from home. Is this going to have a lasting effect? I have COVID was the uh, accelerant that with economy being shut down in certain parts of the economy and then people working from home, Zoom became the method or the tool to communicate. And what would be the lasting effect? And then what is the potential market size over the next five to 10 years? You could ask these questions simply by typing Google and familiarize yourself with what's really happening with the industry. And then lastly, with step number six, if you decide that you actually wanna buy the stock, what would be your entry? What would be your stop loss in the event that your investment thesis and the idea doesn't materialize? We can do all of this analysis, but we can still be wrong. You have to be aware of the fact that you can still be wrong and there might be gaps in your investment analysis, quite frankly, because you don't have access to that information. You're competing with other market participants that have dozens of analysts, have billions of dollars in assets, and they're paying top dollar to get the best information. So as a home gamer, as a retail investor at home, you need to be aware of that and know that you can still be wrong. And that's why we advocate having stop losses to minimize your risk. You can view stop loss simply like an insurance policy to protect you from bigger losses and protect your intellectual capital, protect your emotional capital as well. And of course, what will be your price target? When will you sell the stock? So this is more of having a specific execution and game plan after you evaluate a stock. And right underneath step number six, you're getting to see all of the sorts of information that I looked at just to evaluate uh, 
zoom and really get a sense of the situation and what's going on right now with the business. So let's just quickly go through this. So the first one is the company website. So if I click on the link, you see up here, we go to the company website. It's your job and responsibility to do your own homework and familiarize yourself with the company by just reading their product and services, navigating through it, and it's very specifically and, and important. Under the about section of Zoom, you can see it down here on the lower left hand side. Let me actually draw on this. Here it is. Every publicly traded company will have an about section or a corporate section and you want to pay close attention to the investors part of this section right here. So if we click on investors, it'll take you and let me clear this, my drawings, it'll take you to the public section where they release a lot of information about the business, their performance, their strategy, their long-term goals, any type of partnerships that they're doing to grow the business. All of that information will be displayed on this website, on the investors relation part of the company website. Here you could see their most recent quarterly report on their press release, which was issued, let's see, uh, was it November? No, November 2nd is when they're saying that they are going to release the third quarter but I'm more concerned with the second quarter because again, that releases information. So we're gonna open the second quarter press release report. Let me go back to our spreadsheet. And the second source of information, it's actually second quarter report. So let's click on this and you'll see what it looks like. Here it is. And this was reported August 31st. And you can see second quarter revenue was 663 million, but what's important is the growth factor. Look at that, 355% growth year over year. Now, if you had purchased the stock back in May, you would have been anticipating this type of growth because they are adding more customers, they're adding more corporate clients, and not just on the corporate side, but also on the educational side. A lot of universities are using Zoom to run their classroom, their virtual classroom. And this is perhaps a new norm that will have a lasting effect. This is just gonna leave a legacy. And one of the main beneficiary that has basically won during the whole pandemic is Zoom. And you're seeing it here, numbers don't lie. 355% growth, it's, it's astronomical for a company of, of, of this size. So always interpret the information that you're getting from earnings. And in this case, second quarter earnings on Zoom. So how do we summarize this? This is still a growth story and is benefiting from the pandemic. But obviously the market is always forward looking. We're looking forward six to 12 months. And that, what, that, that is the analysis that we're gonna be doing when we are taking a look at projected revenue growth multiple and coming up with our own price target on the stock. And of course, comparing them with the industry, who are the competitors and where they're trading at, okay? So let's go back to our spreadsheet. What is the other third source of information? Well, Yahoo Finance. If you wanna take a quick look at their financials, see what other analysts are forecasting and estimating on the business, you can simply go to Yahoo Finance, type the company ticker symbol, and you can see here, they have a menu header, which has a tremendous wealth of information under analysis, will give you estimates. And these estimates are coming from Thomson One Reuters, which to get access to, to that information or the subscription, it's, it's pretty expensive. I, I believe the cost of that is over $10,000 a year. And Yahoo Finance is kind enough to give us at least two years worth of estimates. Here you can see current year, 2021, which is their, their fiscal calendar year ending January. Then you have next year, which is 2022. And you can go back and get 2020 by just simply reading their press release or their SEC filing and then calculate the growth from 2020 to 2021 and to 2022. So here you get average estimates, earnings per share. What is the street forecasting? 255? And then the following year, $2.94. You can calculate this growth uh, on a spreadsheet to see what that is. In addition to that, they give us revenue. Same thing you see here for 2021 and 2022. How many analysts right now 
are covering Zoom. Here it is, 26 analysts have provided estimates for 2021 and 25 analysts for 2022. What is the average revenue growth rate or the consensus? 2.4 billion for 2021 and for 2022, 3.15 billion. So this is still growing, it's a growth story. But it's the level of growth as high as what they experienced in 2020 and in 2019. One thing, something to understand about markets and valuation is that market pay for growth. The higher the growth, the higher the premium, the higher the multiple. The lower the growth, of course, the lower the premium and the lower the multiple as well. So you can take this information, add it to your spreadsheet and start calculating the growth rate on the business and maybe go back three or four years historically so that you can see the growth. So maybe we could go back uh, 2018 and then you can calculate the growth rate over the last four or five years uh, of the business. And that would give you an edge. You would know if, if it's a growth story or it's a decelerating growth story and maybe what type of multiple would you be willing to pay on the business on a PE basis and on a sales multiple basis, okay? So that is, if I go back to my spreadsheet, step number three, okay? Then you could look at step number four. Familiarize yourself with the business by opening up the SEC filing. So let's click on this link. Here is the SEC filing, specifically the 10K. Uh, your browser is not supporting this. Let's just do this manually. SEC.gov, okay? On the top right hand side, you see company filings. You click on that. And you see here where it says company in person lookup. Name, ticker symbol, or CIQ. Let's type in Zoom. There we go. And here is their filings. And specifically, we want the 10K just to familiarize ourselves with the business and the industry. But even more important, if you really wanna dig deeper into the business, because Zoom did an IPO, I believe it was two, two or three years ago, right? This is a, a new uh, company that hasn't been around for a, for, for a decade. So you could get more information from their S1. So if we type S-1, hit enter, there it is. Here's S1, which is, was reported on 2019, March 22nd. This gives you all the information that you need to know about the business and how the management team or the founders really think about the industry, their strategy, their perspective on the competition and what their technology really is. This right here gives you so much more information about the company. So this is when they initiate their IPO and the S1 is all the information related to the business that the public gets to see if you really want to understand this type of business. So let's see here. This is their table of content. This was a presentation, just a, a screenshot of the presentation. Let's see which bank helped Zoom do an IPO. For those of you that are in our program and are looking into careers in finance, like investment banking, here are the major, here are the major banks. Morgan Stanley, JP Morgan, Goldman, Credit Suisse, Wells Fargo, and, and, and so on. So the, the, the usual names in tech when it comes to investment banking on the advisory on the sales side. So if you have an upcoming interview and it's, let's say for Credit Suisse, which is where I started uh, my career, you could talk about the IPO that they put together um, back in 2019, helping Zoom uh, do their IPO. And maybe you could talk more about this business. So that would be a talking point for you to discuss during your interview. But Focusing more on the business of Zoom. Let's see right here. Uh, let's go down a little bit more. Competitive strengths, okay. Ah, video first cloud architecture. You could read a little bit more about that. Uh, market opportunity, okay. So how do they think about the market opportunity? So let's see, IDC estimates that these segments combined represent a 41 billion, uh, uh, 41, 43.1 billion opportunity by 2022. Okay, this is interesting. So what percentage of that entire industry does Zoom has? Look at Zoom's total revenue divided by this expected market opportunity or industry size, and that will probably be Zoom's market share. Take the company's revenue, 
divided by the size of the entire industry, and there you go. You get their market share. Now, what strategy do they have in place, and what level of execution are they implementing to help them grow their market share? And that's your job as an investor and as an analyst to do your own homework, uh, become an investigator to obtain that information by just reading their SEC filings like this. So this requires some, some level of research and understanding of the business. So if you haven't heard about an S1, now you know what it is. We pull it up on Zoom, which is great to give us more information and educate us on the overall business. So let's go back to our spreadsheet. That's source number four. Source number five is what we talked about before. Do a Google News run and learn more about the virtual communication industry. So prior to this call, I actually did that. And I came across one article that also projects the size of virtual communication. So this is coming directly from PR News Wire, okay? And here is the headline. Global virtual communication market trend to 2028. Global virtual communication market forecast to grow to approximately 20 to 21 billion by 2028. Now there's a little discrepancy here, okay? This particular source is telling us that the market opportunity is between 20 and 21 billion. When we looked at Zoom S1 form, let me go back up here. You can see that they are suggesting, or they're the source that they used, right here. Okay, IDC estimate 43.1. Now, what are these segments? Let's read this a little bit more carefully, especially for me to, to understand this. So, video has increasingly become the way that individuals want to communicate in the workplace. Okay, as a result, uh, communication, collaboration, market, which also includes integrated integrated video chat content sharing okay so video chat and content sharing those three represent an opportunity of 43.1 billion so those are three segments whereas with pr newswire it's focusing maybe on one which could be the video segment and that would explain the 20 to 21 billion okay that's how i'm interpreting the information but for you at home you need to be organized how do you organize this data? You open up a spreadsheet, you put in your source of information like this, okay? Put in your source of information, and then you could say communication video industry size. And we can say 20 to 21 billion by 2028, okay? And then you can say also 43, what was it, uh, I think it was 43.1 billion market size for video, chat, and I believe it was uh, content sharing, okay? So the more information you have, you can record it and organize it, have it on a spreadsheet so that you understand the drivers, the variables, and the market opportunity that the company you're investing in represents. And if this is a mega trend where growth is double digits, 10, 20, 30%, then you know the company you're investing in, it's in the right space because capital is flowing into a growing, vibrant industry that is creating jobs. And you're not stuck with a business that is being disrupted by the pandemic, by COVID, where it's a industry that is experiencing downsizing, it's decreasing, it's dying, and capital is flowing out of that industry and into growing industry. It's always important to understand that dynamic and what is really happening within the market, the paradigm shift at a bigger level, the big picture, and then zoom in, zero in on specific companies that are benefiting from the paradigm shift. And this is what creates capital inflow, why stocks increase, why their market cap increase from 10 to 50 to 100 billion and even greater than that. So let me just validate this to make sure that the number is correct. Yep, 43.1 billion market opportunity in 2022. Okay, good. So that is understanding the industry. There's another source of information that I put over here from Forbes. Let me click on this article or the link. Using virtual communication to powerfully connect companies and employees. 
you could, again, read this article to get multiple perspectives and see that they, ah, let's see here. Here they have something interesting. As noted in my previous post, only 7% of U.S. civilian workers were able to telework in 2019. According to an online study at the beginning of April, 62% of employed Americans have worked from home during the crisis. Okay, I would take this source and I would copy this information because it's data. It's data that might validate and support a bigger price move on a company or on an industry. Data is everything and it helps strengthen your investment thesis and your argument. But like I always keep saying, if you buy the stock, have a stop in place because even with this level of information, we can still be wrong, okay? So I guess that that gives you a healthy dose of skepticism even when you're doing this type of analysis, all right? So lastly, step number six is entry price target and, and stop loss. So let's go through the process of looking at step four, valuation and then later technical analysis. So here is my preliminary analysis on Zoom. All this information is coming from Capital IQ, which is another source of financial data used by industry professionals. And I'm sharing the estimates that I was getting from Capital IQ with you. So here is Zoom expected 2021 revenue growth. Okay. 286%, 2.4 billion. And again, this is very similar to what you saw in Yahoo Finance. For 2022, 3.1 billion, that's a 30% growth. And then for 2023, 3.9 billion, which represents a 25% growth. Okay, so the company's still growing. It's a growth story. But look at the deceleration in growth. In 2021, 286%. But then beyond 2021, the growth decelerates. So are we going to pay a multiple, a high multiple, which if we look at right now, here's the multiple for Zoom. On an LTM basis, it's trading at 91.8. When you look at the, at the competing companies in the industry, like Slack, DocuSign, Tulio, all of these companies, look at their enterprise value over revenue on an LTM basis. And here's the industry mean and median. Let me just validate this, average that's correct. And then on the median side, okay. So you can see that. So Zoom is trading above the industry averages, but we cannot just look at the numbers from an absolute basis. We wanna look at it from rel on a relative basis. And the only way that we can do that is by looking at sales growth to uh, sales multiple to growth. And I have that calculation right here to the right. Here it is. So how am I calculating this? Okay. I am taking EV over sales to sales multiple divided by the sales growth rate times 100 on the denominator side. And this is just to make it into a whole number, which is easier to interpret the information. So for a company like Slack, growing revenue in 2021 by 39%, the market is paying 0.5 in the form of sales multiple for that growth rate, okay? For a company like DocuSign, they're growing revenue in 2021 by 42%. The market is paying 35 sales multiple, EV over revenue. That represents a 0.8. And we could do that same formula or that same methodology to all of these companies, get the average and median for the industry, and that will be our benchmark. So this is what the industry is paying. And we can, I like to use the median just to extrapolate any outliers. 0.8, compare that to Zoom, Zoom is paying 0.3. So on a relative basis, the market is actually uh, undervaluing or discounting Zoom when we compare it to sales multiple. And again, on an absolute basis, this thing's pretty high. 91 times EV over sales, yeah, I, look, it's very high. But then look at the growth, historically. 2021, 286%, 286%. You might think that this is a high multiple, but again, on an absolute basis, you might say, no, it's not. There might be room for upside, okay? So that's an important point to understand when we're doing sales multiple analysis. So let's go back to our financials here, okay? So now that we understand or know what the projected sales growth number is, Let's just simply do sales multiple to growth 
and then apply enterprise value over sales multiple valuation. So for 2021, if we have a 50 times multiple, which of course is much lower than where they're currently trading at right now, why am I decreasing it? Because sales growth is gonna decrease over the coming years, okay? So it's gonna probably become a little bit more in line with the industry. But for argument's sake, for this analysis, let's just assume 50 times. So take your sales, divided by 50 times, you're gonna get an implied enterprise value of 120 billion. You adjust for the net debt, and then you get your equity value. Then you're gonna take equity value, divided by your share sales standing, and you get an implied share price of 427. This represents perhaps 3% downside from their current stock price as of Friday, November 20th, okay? Now, what if we do the same methodologies for 2022? Let's go through this example. So 3.1 billion in expected revenue, okay? We apply 30 times multiple. Why am I using 30 times? Well, look at the sales multiple to grow. Now it's a little bit more in line with the industry. And also look at the sales growth, 30%. So I'm giving the business a one-to-one. -one. Sales multiple is gonna be in line with the growth of the business. So 30X times sales gives me an enterprise value of 94% adjust my net debt, you get equity value, divide equity value by shares outstanding, you get an implied share price of 335. That represents a 24% decline from here. And if we do the same thing for 2023, look at the share price, 349, which represents a 21% decline from the current stock price. So just looking at this example, I'm already getting warning signals. I'm already seeing that maybe the stock has gotten ahead of itself. And all investors that wanted to buy the stock, all the information, it's already baked into the current price. Compare that to May of 2020 this year, this was not the numbers that we were getting. Let me go back to the presentation. Look at the numbers that we were getting. Look at this. We were getting 98% upside, 171% upside, 300 and 7% upside when we applied the same methodology back in May, and I, I was bullish the stock then. This is not what I'm getting right now. What I'm getting right now is what? A potential decline of maybe 20%. I know some investors do not wanna hear that, but I cannot argue with the numbers. Maybe you might say, hey, Luis, give it a higher multiple. Okay, let's see, 50 times, consistent, 50 times for the next three years, or the next two years, I should say. Okay, so now, okay, now I see 26% upside, 58% upside, but here's, here's the thing to, to recognize and understand. Let me zoom out, okay, and I, I think you can still see this. Let me zoom out. Look at the sales to growth multiple for those two years. That's much higher than what the industry is paying right here. So I don't think that the market is gonna pay a premium for that growth, especially where more competition will start to get into this area. Facebook announced that they're having their own video conference. Google's already doing theirs. You have Cisco with their own platform, which is called, I believe is WebEx. You have a uh, go-to webinar or, or go-to meeting. So more, com uh, more companies are gonna begin to uh, improve their products. So you're gonna get an increase in competition. And maybe that's one of the reasons why revenue would decline. So I'm not gonna pay this level of multiple for this business. That's why I wouldn't do 50. If you wanna pay 50 times multiple, by all means do it. You might be right. Just make sure that you understand there is another sec uh, segment of the investor community that would not be willing to pay that. So let me undo this and go back to what I will be willing to pay. 30 and 25 times, and it still gives me a decline on the stock. So this is sales multiple. Now let's look at PE, okay? What if we assume PE valuation, which is focused mostly on earnings per share, okay? Look at the earnings per share growth beyond 2021. So in 2021, they are estimating $2.51. 2022, $2.61, and then following that, $3.22. You can see the earnings per share growth. This is coming from Capital IQ, a collection of sell side analysts giving their opinion, uploading their model, and we're looking at the industry average, okay? So down here, 
what if we give it a 50 times PE multiple? Okay, what would the implied price rate be? So if we take 50, multiply it by their expected earnings per share of 251, okay, multiply that by that, you get 126. You do the same thing for 2022, 261 multiplied by 50 times, you get 131 and then for 2023, okay. But now let's increase the earnings per share or the PE multiple. What if uh, the market pays 100 times? Look at the stock price, okay? Especially for, for 2022 and 2023. Look at the stock price, it's still at the climb. Okay, let's assume 200 PE. Okay, then look at the increase. But at a 200, let's even do it for this one. At a 200 PE multiple, look at the peg ratio growth that you're doing. Maybe for 2021, that might be possible, but beyond 2021, look at the peg to, uh, to earnings growth ratio. This is extreme, you're gonna pay 50 times this growth. So if the company in 2022 is gonna grow earnings per share at 4%, you're gonna pay 50 times that 4%. Me personally, I wouldn't. Again, there's a segment in the market that will probably pay for it, but I, would, I wouldn't pay to it. I, I, again, I think that all, in, all public information is already baked into the stock. So this level of analysis is just giving me warning signals. It, it, it's making me be a little bit more aware and cautious of what the potential price target would be on the stock if they miss one quarter, if they have more increased competition, and also if the growth begins to decelerate. This is why I do this analysis because it allows me to have kind of a, a roadmap ahead based on fundamental and technical uh, valuation. So I wouldn't pay 200, I think it's too expensive. So let's just go back to maybe 150. And even at 150, you get an 11% decline for 2022 and then 10% upside in 2023. This doesn't get me excited. I wanna see at least 90% or higher return on the stock, increase in the stock price so that I can have a reasonable return on investment. Okay, now in terms of price target, let's, let's go back and change this to 100, okay? Uh, maybe 120, I'll give it uh, 120, yeah. And look, 120 EPS, um, PE multiple, it's, it's me being a probably, I don't wanna say aggressive, I wanna be maybe uh, a little bit fair and give them this multiple, but I, I, I'm a little bit lost for words, um, if I'm being sincere. So with price target, we're gonna take the median, a blended approach on what I did for sales multiple, okay? And I'm gonna do the same thing, take the median on a blended approach for PE multiple, and take the median from these two methodologies and look at the price target that I get, 368. That's a 16% downside, from where the stock is currently at right now. Now, of course, remember that they have an upcoming catalyst. They are reporting their third quarter earnings. When are they reporting that? Let's go back to their website. Investors relations section, third quarter, November 30th. So that is, when is that? That is gonna be on not next week, but Monday of the following week. So in another week, we're going to know if the growth is reasonable enough to justify higher price points. But then of course, look what's happening with COVID, the pandemic. There is now a rise in number of cases. I believe we are at 200,000 now new cases on a daily basis. Uh, it's, and I've also seen uh, headlines where in states like New York and California, they're starting to uh, put more restrictions and, and lockdowns are starting to come into effect. So maybe that might benefit Zoom, but how much is it gonna benefit Zoom? Because over the last eight months, we have already been operating uh, remotely. So Zoom has already benefited from all of the new users and all of the new customers and clients that they've uh, wrote into their subscription uh, programs or, or products in, at the beginning of the year, right? When COVID was uh, really a, a major issue. Um, 
it still remains one, but now we have more systems and process in place maybe to combat it. Of course, on the upside, we have the vaccine uh, from Pfizer, Moderna, and that might be something that can provide some sort of relief to the uptick in cases. And then it's not going to be as severe as what we've had in the months of March, April, and May. So we'll just have to wait and see how the market interprets the information. Their third quarter earnings report, and maybe in the upcoming days and weeks, what the new COVID cases are gonna be, what are gonna be the policies from governors across all states in the US, just to be, try to maintain this uh, rise in, in new corona cases. So that's my take on it. So having this information, Okay, let's say 368, it's my new price target. Let's open up the charts. Let's look at where the stock is currently at right now. So now we apply a little bit of chart or technical analysis. I can see that there's several inflection points. There's a flexion point up here, high for the year, which is around 480. And here's another inflection point. We can say that maybe around 380 is support and resistance. So right now the stock is just basically consolidating, right? Came gapped up from this point, then finished another move to the upside, came back down, and I believe that earnings will be the catalyst to either take us back to 580 or take us down maybe to this inflection point right here, which would be between 260 and 240. This is a more narrow view of the stock and where it's, it's at right now. Okay. Now let's take a look at the bigger picture. Let's zoom out and look at the monthly. Boy, <laughs> will you look at that? Will you look at that? Will you be buying the stock? I mean, will you be buying the stock at these levels up here? Will you be buying at this area, right? When we did the entire analysis, uh, I believe is, let's zoom in a little bit more. Let, let, let's pull up, uh, let's go to the weekly. Okay, here's the weekly. And we did all of this analysis back in May, over here, around 160 or 180, I think that the stock price was. The stock already doubled from there, okay? Now, the, from a risk reward standpoint, this is uh, 100%, okay? Even more than 100%, plus 100%. Now, from here to here, it's not the same. It's not the same upside. This is the type of risk reward that I'm looking for. I'm looking for a stock that might double in price while minimizing my downside risk by using stops. Are you going to be buying the stock at this area, expecting for it to double, um, giving that most of the price and the upside and all of the growth that they experienced in the first half of the year, again, is already baked in and has materialized? Uh, me personally, no. But there might be some of you that will still be willing to pay for it. There's some of you that may still be bullish on the stock. My only point for those of you that are still bullish on the stock is to do your own homework and look at the other side of the argument. Put yourself in an analyst that might have a lower price target on the stock. What are the concerns that he has? What are the negative points? You need to be aware of them. And also giving your positive view on the company, combine both of them and then have an actual game plan and make the best decision for yourself when you can look at both sides. I think it gives you an edge and don't be clouded or shutting down another viewpoint because you're gonna have gaps within your investment analysis and, and in this game, you, you cannot have that. You need to have all available information, digest it, internalize it, and, and arrive to your own conclusion, but just make sure you have your stops in place because that's like your insurance policy from preventing you to having uh, a losing position or, or a losing position that gets out of hand. Uh, so yeah, I, I think for me, this, all the prices already baked in. I mean, if they do report better than expected earnings and the growth is going to continue, then this is just maybe a temporary pullback for a bigger price or a bigger move to the upside, uh, like it did right here. But here, you see here this tight consolidation and then it increases. You see right here, this tight consolidation. Okay. So you had a tight consolidation in the, the first tight consolidation, the second tight consolidation. Now, is this a, a tight consolidation? No, this is a wide price spread, a wide consolidation. 
Uh, so this is what perhaps releases information that I'm interpreting that there are people that bought in the first consolidation or early on this year and they sold it to perhaps new investors that are buying the stocks that still believe it has the same growth of momentum than from the first people that bought it in the beginning of the year. Uh, I don't think that's gonna be the case, but this is how I interpret the stock. This is my approach, my perspective, and maybe you could take some away with, from, uh, from it and apply it to your own analysis. And, and, and if you take one or two things away that maybe improve your analysis, then that's great. Then I've done my job as an instructor, maybe as an analyst as well, sharing my process, and it makes you a better investor and it elevates your understanding of things. Uh, so now, what do you think? Are you bullish to stock? Will you buy the stock? Yes, or will you sell the stock? No. Let me launch the poll here. Okay, so here's what we have. 63% of you say you will still buy soon. Okay, good, that's, that's information for me, great. 38% of you say you would sell, okay. Personally, on my end, I wouldn't buy the stock. I, I would probably be, be a seller. If I'm looking at it from a long-term perspective, three to six months holding period. If I was trading this stock for, on a daily basis, swing trading, then I could apply a different strategy but we're looking more of a long-term time frame, so I, I, I probably wouldn't be a buyer right here. Uh, but there is 38% of you now that are saying you will sell the stock. Well, now you have it, right? The market is a collection of people's opinion, and people get to vote with their money, with their capital. So if most of you guys are in participating in this session, if you're saying that you are a buyer, maybe the majority of the market will still be a buyer. So that's inside information for me, okay? And how do I trade the stock based on that additional information just from the poll that we took? Okay, now I get very technical. So I go to the daily, and let me clear this up. I go to the daily, and I need price action to validate that there is still more buyers right here. If we break this level right here, if we break let's say three let's say 350 let's just round to 350. if it's above 350 next week i'll probably buy the stock in anticipation to positive earnings and maybe a gapped up to 580 580 right here so that's how i will play it on a more intraday basis being more technical okay shorter time frame but on a longer time frame three to six months i go back to the weekly and I can see that there's buyers. This last week there were buyers, which is positive, and I can anticipate the next move to the upside, but very important, earnings will be the determining factor. If earnings are strong, if more buyers come in to support the stock, then it's game on for 580, and maybe a much more higher price point for that. Let's, let's do this right here. So if we break this, let me draw it here. Let's do, just do very simple technical analysis. A to B, Q C to D. Let's duplicate this uh, right here. Wow, 220, uh, 727. There we go, let's see, yep, uh, 726. Okay, that would be my next price target, provided that earnings are positive and they break resistance. Okay, so now you have both sides. You have the conservative side, where the stock can decline 25% based on sales multiples, but now you have the upside, provided that they have better than expected earnings, there's still a lot of interest in the stock, breaks resistance, and if we break resistance of around 590, 585 or so, the next price point would be in the uh, 720 to 740, right, right around this range, okay? So there you have it, folks. That's my take and my analysis. So I hope you found uh, value in this. I hope this was informative and now you have a different perspective on the stock which one is going to be right we'll, we'll wait for earnings earnings i think will be the main uh driving force or the catalyst that would validate this if it goes to the upside or let's draw this or to the downside where it would come right back down to maybe this area 350 so you have case number one which is the bull case and then you have case number two which is the bear case. Which one is going to win? Which one will play out? Time will tell.
But the market, it's there for you to validate and test your ideas, so place your bets. <laughs> uh, all right, folks, with that being said, I'll end it here. Take care, and like always, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.